with housing, and would they rather help us live than to help us give? As far as what they're paying, they wouldn't help me keep a twelve hundred dollar apartment. Four thousand four hundred twenty seven dollars and twenty five cents a month to live across the street from the dope man, yeah. In the four thousand four hundred twenty seven dollars and twenty five cents to live across the street from the dope man. Not the crack man, not the weed man, but the dope man. Per month roach infested, rat infested, everything. To keep families in the yeah. But they took all the rent subsidies. Yeah. I had a twelve hundred dollars a month apartment that was a super. And they took that. Now they rather pay you these motherfuckers four th say the number again, baby. Four thousand four hundred twenty seven dollars and forty seven cents to give to some Hasidics to keep them in the in the, in the shelter to help us get a, 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 a low subsidized house. They budget my, my public assistance off that four thousand dollars. So what we receive is sixty five dollars every two weeks to live on. No bullshit. And you wonder why I'm upset? Huh? A disabled vet, and that's all the help I can get. But if I go live in another country for and, six and, months, and, and you said and you, and back, you said you were the super for how many buildings? I was a super for 148, 150, 137 Patrick, and 487 McDonald Street. They were all bought. I was put out of each one of them. Spanish took my jobs, and now my family. So, so who, who who purchased the property? Jews purchased the property. Yeah, we knew the charm or what time it was from the church bell. From the church bells, a couple of blocks down. Okay. Now check this out. The whites came in here, put a petition up to stop the bells because it's disturbing them. This been going on for since we was kids. That happened but yet, right there I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying in my area that happened. Concord. But yet, yes, you hear the Muslim, the Muslim years. bells. Now listen, they be out here on the step with trumpets and drums and shit. They be out here playing music. We can be in there playing cards. The police will come to us and we'll not fuck with them. They sit outside, walk all up and down, drinking and everything. We stand in our fucking yard drinking a beer. They want to come in the yard, which they know they can't, but they still do it. Come mm -hmm. in the yard, oh, this, this, this. Come on, man. This shit is crazy. <laughs> in the block to try to make rules. That's right. And some of your own. I'm put my phone on the oh, car. no, well, she's this, she's that. Get the fuck out of here. That's the type of shit that, that, that we deal with. We have some of our own advocating for a white woman that rents. And because they got their own little little shit that we'd be surprised. There's stories on how a lot of them got their shit. Yeah. And they think people don't know about it. But since they got their own, mm -hmm. it was like, fuck everybody else. The white lady want to help us. Uh, that'll make our property yeah. value go up. Now they gotta, you got to worry about them taking your property now. Because if they can't get it legally, they will find a loophole, even if it's eminent domain, to yeah. take your shit. That's what they did downtown with all the people. They take that with eminent domain. That eminent domain exactly. all them fuckers out their house. They try to come through here and make certain houses. If you make one or two or three houses on this block landmarks, then once it's landmark, then now you don't really have sale of your property. Your own, yep. Because they so can the come and say, this is a, this is a landmark. Was it one of these houses over here trying? Yeah, this and is a landmark. Down here to do once it. it's a landmark, okay. the city can tell you, that's a, a landmark, it's a historical property. We need mm -hmm. this for such and such. They take it your property. Eminent domain, you get nothing. But they don't think about that. They think just because this one white person comes, it's going to help all of us. It's no. not going to help y'all. It's going to help them get to help themselves to y'all. Yeah. They don't understand it, but they don't get it. They think they know everything because they still got that crab in the brown. I got mine. So, fuck yours. Yeah. And it's deep. It's deep. It's embedded in this bitch. And it's ridiculous, bro. But like I said, I ain't got much of nothing. I done lost two jobs, two super jobs, for five buildings in less than six months. And I'm staying in a house where the old man passed away, and I'm there because nobody's to protect me. Now, like I said, two jobs, four buildings in less than six months or more, and been replaced by nothing but Hispanic, all bought by Jews. What's going to happen to the rest of them? We live in the sky. Think back to the first day you came and we had work. Right now, you know what I mean? Tell me your name and your age and you know how long you've been in the style. Uh, Ryan Johnson, uh, call me Pop. 38th and 39th of November. I've been living around here since 96. 96, alright. You know, I mean, so what are, what are your experiences like, you know, being in this neighborhood and growing up around here? Well, I mean, I would live anywhere in the, you know, 
Paul Hood, you know, ups and downs, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had fun, you know, I, I, I did some things that were uh, detrimental to myself, other people, you know, struck them, you know, living the so-called street life, but no more. But, you know, it was a lot of things we go through. I don't want to, I hate being the excuse about being a part of the environment, part of, but that everybody is to some extent. Everybody experiences what they go through, make them who they are, behaviors and everything. So I don't think my experience is unique compared to anybody else that lives in Bed Style, Brooklyn, or any, any hood period, whether it's in Chicago, or any experience, experience, you know. We are, we're treated as an underclass. And a lot of times, you act how you're treated. Okay. So, so, so I mean, what are what are what are some of the changes that you've seen in this neighborhood in this area in the last ten years? Well, uh, full disclosure, I, I was uh, away for a while. You know, okay. I was doing, and it was almost a, uh, I came from a culture shock because Caucasians are in here. They're coming in in droves. They're buying up property, and this is a neighborhood that they didn't, they didn't want back in the days. They want no, want no parts of us. And now they're buying anything that they have and they buy. And we're selling them. Okay. We're selling them. And I just, that was the biggest shock. And it's just not, you know, Caucasian. It's like, you know, the, the hipsters, you know, the pink hair, the green hair, you know, the chain on the neck, opening clubs, eateries, businesses. And we patronize them. Not saying that it's, it's, it's wrong, but I think it's wrong when we don't patronize our own. Okay. And rather, when they come in here, we give them our money. True. You no, know, and, it, and it's a fact. It's, it's a, uh, our money stays in our community for six hours on average. That's the whole thing, six hours. Run right through it. This is why we don't, we don't really have anything to show for our hard work. Everybody here isn't a, a, a thug or a vagrant or criminal. And you can see because they're buying property from black people. Yeah. And also, I mean, you think you got names of pounds from selling drugs or robbing somebody. Okay. Absolutely not. But rather than work with each other to change the neighborhood for what's better, they rather than sell and get out. But what happened with that though is the ones that are in here and don't have the means for own property to sell, they're getting displaced, they're getting priced up. Okay. So, so let me ask you this: Do you feel like the with the current neighborhood that minorities are kind of being priced out? Oh, definitely, definitely. I believe it started the tail end of the new guy administration and Bloomberg took it to another level. Think about how the, the tools to get in out of Manhattan, how they raised it, get it back now, and how they raised it, how the price of rent is going up exponentially every year. You know, but the cost of living is higher, but the wages are higher. Okay. And everybody making a big deal now about this fifteen dollar uh, proposal for minimum wage. But that's not that's, that's nothing in this yeah. in this program. That's nothing. Brooklyn's like one of the highest pro period. Yeah. Brooklyn is so expensive to live in. Yeah. You can't live here on a uh, fast food with any any really non-professional career, unless it's vocational and you know you're really getting good money, whether you're working on cars, money, you can't get by with a, with a retail job. Yeah. You can't get by. Alright, so you basically feel that this 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 renaissance or this gravitational pull that Bad Styles had over the past, you know, say 10 or 15 years has actually hurt the neighborhood or helped the neighborhood? It, it's... It's helped the neighborhood, but it's hurt the neighbors. I mean, the people that live here is hurt. The neighborhood as a whole is going to be a regardless. It's, 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 it's a place. You know what I mean? It's an entity. So as far as the neighborhood, it's going to help it in the long run. Because when you have the Caucasians move in, you get what? You get a, a higher police presence. And you, think about this. Back in the days, when you ever seen beat walkers around here like that back in the days? Never. 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 And and I and, and I and I I lived in the style my whole life, but I moved over here in like 2001, 2002, 
And this shit was turned over here. Yeah. It was turned yeah. over there 13 years ago. And it's like, I moved away in 2007, and I came back in 2014. And I'm like, in that time frame alone, the neighborhood has really, really changed. That's it. They were going to be fine. They were going to be buildings. The people here, it's, it's not good for them. It's not good for them, but they, they couch it. Meaning, meaning, meaning the people that have been here or the people that are moving in here? The people that have been here. The natives. Yeah, the natives, exactly. exactly. Yeah, the natives, exactly. Okay. The indigenous people to this neighborhood, yeah, exactly. It's not good for the metal. It's not. Okay. No way, no how. And it's amazing. And I'm not saying they shouldn't have the, the freedom to walk through here, but I can walk through here any time in the morning. Yeah. Drunk, inebriated, you know, and, 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 and with out of care in the world. Yeah. But I average black people can't do that. They don't fear cops. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like, this is where we're from. So we live, you have people that live here their whole lives, 50, 60 years, up their whole life. And they still get it from these uh, so called officers alone. Yeah. Got hold of, of, of hold. Got, the same people who follow these bad pay with their taxes. Yeah. They don't feel safe over here with coming these cops. Yeah. So I mean, with, 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 with all of that being said and, and all of the input, you know what I mean, thank you for taking this time. Where do you see this neighborhood in the next 10 years? I see this neighborhood in the next 10 years being almost a 180. I see a lot of Caucasians living here and the natives that live here, for the most of them, except the ones that actually keep their property are going to be new natives are going to be uh these, these millennials that don't have any sense of culture or any kind of cultural identity all they want to assimilate for yeah. them for those people this is a boom this is like what's up this they love this yeah they love this oh yeah i can't wait to move these and now you know what out of the neighborhood yeah i'm tired of this i'm tired of dudes on the corner this is that but it may though you're not tired of that you're tired of people that look like you on the corner because as you know any given weekend friday Saturday, Sunday, you will see mobs of white people walking up and down yeah boisterous making all the noise in the world you see the cops walk by will not give them a second thought so it's not we're not really fed up with the behavior or the hanging out or the, the undesirables as you put it in a neighborhood or in the corner doing nothing you tired of us yeah who look, look like us being in the neighborhood because they in your mind they bring bad attention to the neighborhood and you're backwards thinking they're bringing the value of your property down. Yeah. So you're rather the ones that are lighter complected to come in here with their with their with their new money come in here and, and rehabilitate and renovate this neighborhood when that's not what it needs. It just needs, in my opinion, a change of thinking. Yeah. From so, from from the natives, from yeah, the yeah, people yeah, that are yeah, here. Yeah, that's, that's all. Yeah. That's all. And it takes one generation. I mean, are we really on the last vestiges of it because, you know, there's been a, uh, an entire gentrification process that's happened in Harlem already, yeah. and it's really happening in the sky, and it's like, it's, 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 it's really a big issue, and it's something that needs to be addressed, that's why I'm doing this, but... Well, this is the only way it will be addressed, like, what you're doing right now, and with grassroots movement, because the media is not going to give this any attention. Yeah. Because it's, it, it's counterproductive to... Their constituents, because yeah. every every everybody every everybody is is beholden to somebody. Yeah. You know, and and the powers that be, you know, they don't want this out. Yeah. They don't want this out. They yeah. rather us get upset and us continue to march, and they care nothing about that. As long as they make their money and they and they move people that look like them in these neighborhoods, everything is fine. Yeah. That's the plan, but it is. it's gonna be. It's gonna flip definitely. It's already. You see it slowly but surely. But it's it's gonna flip. The next ten years, it's gonna be night and day. Yeah. Because for me, it was night and day. When I came home, and I see, I can believe it. Yeah. Believe it. It's the same thing with the the eminent domain and the puppies. You know what I mean? Yeah. The same thing with the eminent domain. How you just you don't see this is the fallacy. Of the you don't really own anything in this country. Yeah. Let's be honest. You don't own anything. Because as you see, they came, they came in there. What was the, what was the, 
there was protests, but only from natives. And like a lot of people, there's no real, no real coverage in the media when Ratner and Purple Wolf did what they did with that center for they move everybody out even need your property. You can't, I mean, that's that's crazy. How do you just place a whole neighborhood? Yeah. It's completely different now, down here. Yeah. It's completely different. Downtown is like Manhattan now, like Midtown. Yeah. I think I think I think I think Brooklyn is experiencing this change, but yo, I definitely thank you for your time today, Pop. You know what I mean, and we'll contrib time, contributing your thoughts to this, and you know what I mean. We definitely gonna keep forward with this movement and time, and, and let and, and let the world know what's happening in Bed Stuy from the natives, from the people that are here. You know what I mean, and it's not necessarily as a we're not making this into a race issue. We're making this into a people issue. You know what I mean, because I grew up in this neighborhood and. I want to be able to afford to live here, and I want my kids to be able to afford to live here. Thing, uh, in closing, racism exists in this country. It always has, all going to be, for a simple fact, this country's history, any child, white, black, purple, whatever colors, in the school, they learn from their textbooks yeah. that we started in this country as slaves. Exactly. So we're going to always be in their minds a permanent underclass, unless you're somebody that can do something for them. A exactly. Or Winfrey, somebody, you know what I mean, who can make them money, make them lots of money. Exactly. Like Jordan, you know, that could, that could turn a, a, a fledgling company into a billion dollar industry. Exactly. Put it on his own back. And it's, right now, it's more overtly, it's more classism, which is, yeah. because we're an underclass. So it's more, have, we, we, don't, we don't have the, the economic means, per se, we have the voices, you know, to, to let our issues and our issues be heard. So like you said, it's not more so race, more classism. They're trying to get niggas out of here, and they're pressing us out. Yeah. So it's a class issue. And unless we unite as a people, as a class, because it's not only uh, black that live here, you know, there's uh, Hispanics, Latinos, uh, Arabs, I mean, all kinds of people that live here that, that aren't rich. You know, they're making this aware New York is going to be a tourism state. Yeah. And the only people who live here are people who have money. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Good luck, bro. I mean, what are your thoughts on it, sir? What are my thoughts on it? Well, I own property in this area. And um, unfortunately, you know, they're, 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 they're changing the area and they're taking the culture out of the area. Okay. And that's about about the community. Yes. Local to this area, and um, you know it's funny how they come with a sense of entitlement. That sort of bothers me. Yeah. You know, I'm like you know, it's cool. You know, you come around. You know, it is what it is. Business is business. Money is money. I understand that. But in the same sense, you know, there is a culture here. Yeah. And you have to acknowledge that. That's as, a, as I, I think this neighborhood has a deep historical, deep oh, historical yeah, roots. Yeah, it does. And um, you know, traditionally, this is a neighborhood that they didn't want. Exactly. They didn't want exactly. it. Exactly. And. Despite everything, the war on poverty, the war on drugs, right, the right, crack right, epidemic, right, right, right. I still feel like the residents of Bedford Stuyvesant came out of it. Yep. They still came out of it. We survived. We survived everything economically. We survived everything financially that they've thrown us, yeah. thrown at us, and the neighborhoods still thrive. Yeah, and that's the thing that you know that, that, that this block in particular, this stretch of okay. blocks, have always been tight. You know, everybody, we know people on that block, I know people on this block up yeah. here, all the way everybody, up. Yeah. all up to 35. Yeah. Because we all, we all grew up grew up. And that's, that's, you know, I'm, I'm 37. Okay. I grew up on Decatur between Tompkins and Truth. And it's, and it's the same thing. It's just like, I know everyone, you know, on the next Decatur, yeah. a lot, a few people on the Decatur after right. that. I know everybody on McDonald Street or on Macon, on, everything. Right now, face is familiar, but I just I'm can't on, place it. I'm on, I'm putting them putting between them? Tompkins and Marcy right now. Okay. All right. And 16 years ago when I first what moved here, mm -hmm. you couldn't find nobody here. Exactly. You know, they had abandoned lots. I'm sorry, bro. They had abandoned lots. You know, nobody was going to buy the bills or anything like that. You know, and you were able to buy a building fairly cheap over there. Now. Buildings are selling 1.8. Yeah. Two. Really? I just yeah. I just spoke to uh, a friend of mine's grandmother. I'm actually working on a documentary series. That's okay. why I have my camera you. and you. you know I'm walking around getting people's thoughts. 
I talked to my friend's grandmother, and she lives right on Halsey and Tompkins, mm -hmm. and they have a wood frame, not even a brownstone, right. a wood frame house going right for one. Right across the street from the park. Right, right across the street from 258, 258 Park. Yeah. Uh -huh. $1.7 million. Yeah. Yeah. A wood frame house. It's not even a brownstone. Yeah. So when these tax assessors come around, yeah. and this, after this property is sold, it's going gonna, it's gonna to affect the entire neighborhood. Of course it is. Yeah. That's the yeah. purpose. That's the that's the, the the third stage of the regentrification. Right? It's, it's been done in a very very calculated and well orchestrated phase. Mm -hmm. The first one was when they came up with that BS with the um, bias crimes, yeah, the, uh, racially uh, motivated crimes for punishment. Okay, it wasn't an issue when they were killing little Negroes out in Howard Beach, Bensonhurst, and everywhere else. Yeah, but as soon as they decided they wanted to come back over here, you put your hand on a non Afro American, a Caucasian. Now you got a hate crime coming on. You. Yeah. So now yeah, we can y'all protect it. Y'all can walk through their neighborhoods now to find what you want. Yeah. That was during who? Giuliani administration. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Bloomberg with the with the with the, with the quality and life yeah. initiatives and Bloomberg all of that. comes along. Now his son buys a house on Green and, and Malcolm X. His mm -hmm. son owns that building. Okay. Right? Nobody hardly knows that. We got a we got a businessman um basically running the city. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. He comes mm -hmm. along. Now, I'm going to implement this beautiful rent assistance program for low income. Basically, you Negroes that we done, tie, we done hit with crimes where your parents can't get subsidies or we can put you out of public housing, we're going to give you this new program because we're going to give Section 8 to all these European and Russian Jews coming over here when Russia collapsed. Mm -hmm. They brought all of them over here, gave, made the whole Vincent Arts, Midwood, all that's Jewish now with Section 8. Mm -hmm. They cut it off. If you, for all of minority born here. Okay. He come up with this new program, the Advantage Program. It's good for two years, right? And it stipulate that after two years, they were terminating it. Now, you know, left the shelter, got a partner, got a system for two years, now you gotta go right back to the shelter system. Hmm. So now, while you're doing that, we're legally allowed to put you out. Yeah. All right, now while we're putting you out, no, no, no. my people no, no, no. are buying the property, okay. which are the Jewish community. True. Okay. All right, they're buying all the properties. Like what happened? Uh, his, uh, his nephew um, got killed in a robbery. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Down in Virginia. Yeah, yeah. So we all trying to, you know, get together, you know, try to do the right thing. Okay. So, okay. Nah, 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 nah you good. <laughs> okay. I didn't know what was going on. Nah, nah, you know what I mean? Nah, 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 you good. But yeah, you know, and, and, like, and like I said, you know, it's, 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 you know, and I've just watched it over the years. And I tell my kids, because I have kids. Uh, one is uh, 15 and one is 16. Oh, I tell them how dogs. the neighborhood used to be. <laughs> yeah. I know, I know the dogs. I know, I know the dogs. You still, yeah, this you know, one want to be friends with me. You, know, you still want to, you still want to know the street. You know exactly. Know That's your neighborhood. It's your neighborhood. Yeah. You know, you still it's a, is, is a history in this neighborhood. And I think with a lot of the changes and the gentrification that's taking place, I think that history is being lost. It's definitely being lost. Well, it's being lost, it's also being rewritten in the same, in, 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 in the same breath because, you know, even though we're losing our culture, you know, we're losing our culture, and they're, and they're building their culture. Exactly. You know, because now, you know, they're moving to the neighborhood now. All the best kid. They settled, you know, they all settled. You know, and now, see, start, and now they're starting to start family in, you, in, in, in the neighborhood. Yeah. So now, what used to be ours now becomes theirs. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And it's like, you know, I mean, my kids go to school upstate, fine and well, but it's 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 almost like the reason, one of the reasons why they're there is because they're black. Yeah. One of the reasons they're there is also to help white kids assimilate on how to learn how to be in the black culture. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So it's a disadvantage and it's an advantage. And that's what they look at, you know. They they, they 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 try and, you know, you know, learn from us, take from us, and exclude us. What do, what do you guys? What do you, what do you guys realistically see this neighborhood in the next five to ten years or so? Right to the ground. Park Slope. Park Slope. <laughs> Not Park Slope. That's, no, I'm saying no. It's going to be like Park Slope. You, you know, might as well retroactive it back to the forties. Well, unfortunately, you know, I hear what you're saying, Rock, but I don't see us doing that. You know, we don't. We're not going to burn this area. I know, because I know that, but it's yeah, a good thought for me. <laughs> no, I, I hear what you're saying. You know, but, I'm just making it. But, um, no, I, I, I see it looking more like, like Park Slope, where, you know, the businesses are coming into the area now. I mean, look look at Malcolm X. Yeah. Look how bright Malcolm X is now. Yeah. You right. know? Well, you see how many no, businesses, saying, they're, like, they're bringing all of a sudden, how many yeah. how many conveniences you could get all around the corners now. Yeah. All these little stores just because they're catering to these people. I that it never was catering to us. How many of them are African American owned? Well, that's my point. None. All right. That's my point. That's my point. None. That's my point. 
We're the biggest set of cattle. The home is, is equity five, and is wealth. Yeah. And if and if you don't have that, then you know, do you feel like the the black community in Bedford Stuyvesant is partly responsible for it? Do you feel like because there's a segment this this but not really because you got to look at it this way the banks take our money we can't get nothing you coming across from wherever you get grants you getting stores you getting this we've been here forever can't get none of that can't yeah. get loan for anything you can't but get, you get none of that ticket for sitting in your yard so sure yeah. yeah if Walt Disney was a black man with all the ideas or Walt Disney had. Mm -hmm. Them bank wasn't letting him no five million dollars to no. make no movie, you know. No, right. Right. You weren't with your members on this block. That's your right. Your members on this block. You know, 1960. Yeah. Hold on. Uh -huh. Somebody's recording. Okay. Right I'm so sorry about see, that. He, 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 he yeah. Got, but yeah. You know, I mean. You know, but in the he 1960s, he got the microphone. You know, Listen, in the 1960s, uh, no, you don't know who is who. You know, my, nope. you know, I, I used to say you could know. Hold on, hold on. One they second. help us. My, 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 my friend, his parents bought their house for sixteen thousand right. dollars in 1960. Right. Imagine that. So I'm quite sure your dad probably paid maybe twenty if that much. What's going on, right. Daniel? Daniel, no, no, about, right. about, right. about, uh, about twenty. All right, and you know, at that time. So you know, he's been here for decades. Okay. So, so you know, Italian, he's Italian. He said, I'm black. Okay. He says, I bought Italian, but we're all black. Okay. Yeah. All right. How you doing? So, you know, it's like, you know, so now, you know, I mean, yeah. they still can't explain how the property just keep on jumping and jumping and jumping and jumping the way it is. Now, here it is. You bought a house for 16000 I mean, um, Yo, what's up, fellas? Yeah. Yeah. Happy yeah. holidays, man. Same to you, man. Same to you. All right. All right. Let's go. All right. Mm. Big bro. What's good? <laughs> That's your man. That's your man. Come on, all right, baby. You? Chill it, baby. Chill it. Let's stay, cousin. Yeah, so, you know, oh, you know what's it's up? like, it's, it's, it's a situation Yo, now where... They they realize the the lower lower income families oh, nah, nah. are able to you, buy the house, that. send their kids to school, mm -hmm. make a living, retire, yeah. 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 Decent yeah. retire. Hey, exactly. And they're like, yo, how could you do that on thirty thousand dollars? How could you do that on forty thousand dollars? Yeah. And they started realizing, they started looking like, oh wait a minute, we have to start changing the script because these guys are starting to invest. Yeah. Because they have good thinkers coming out of here, they have kids who are well educated coming out of here. Exactly. You know, and making changes. <laughs> Said, um, bro, News One wants us to do it to come to the station and get on on TV. Now, okay, we are supposed to get on TV and talk about gentrification, but she slipped and said, Joe, we gonna have a debate. I said, what kind of debate we gonna? Have? Oh no, no, I don't mean a debate. So what they were trying to do was to get me down there, me and her, and debate on each other. Well, well, how the black is since they moved there, and how the white right system yeah. is. But she slipped up and said, Joe, I think we gonna have a debate. Like a debate on what? If you're talking about the brownstones and the block, the historic, the, the history of the Where's block, the debate? Where's, where's the, the debate, debate coming in from? There shouldn't yeah. be no debate. Man. Am I right?